Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's so wonderful to have each and every one of you here with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here in Business Law 2 on this Monday, November 14th, 2022. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's turn to page 690, Insurance, uh, Chapter 33. And then I can open up a test, right? Yeah, yay, yay. By means of insurance, protection from loss and liability may be obtained. 33-1, insurance contract. What in the world is an insurance contract? And look what it says, beautiful people. It says insurance is a contract by which one party for stipulated consideration promises to pay another party a sum of money on the what? On the destruction of loss of or injury to something in which the other party has an interest or to indemnify that party for any loss or liability to which that party is subjected. Who are the parties? Who are the parties, my wonderful people? What's the answer? The promissory insurance contract, the promissory in the Thank you. So the promissor is what? Is is uh, is an, an insurance contract, and they're called the what? The insurer or the underwriter, right? And then you have who? Us, right? The person, right? Uh, we're called the insured or the policyholder. And then what do you call that promise? Promise insurer is generally set forth in a written contract called a policy. Thank you for reading that. Insurance contracts are ordinary made through an agent, an agent or broker. The insurance agent is an agent of the insurance company, often working exclusively for one company. For the most part, the ordinary rules of agency law govern the dealing between the agent and the applicant for insurance. What is an insurance broker? I'll answer this one is generally an independent contractor. We've seen that before, right? Independent contractor who is not employed by any one insurance company. When a broker obtains a policy for a customer, the broker is the agent of the customer for the purpose of that transaction. Under some statutes, the broker is made an agent of the insurer with respect to transmitting the applicant's payments to the insurer. Now, very important question. What is an insurable interest? And why is that important? Very important. What is it? 33-1B. Insurable interest. A person obtaining insurance must have an insurable interest that in the subject matter insured, or in the subject matter insured. If not, the insurance contract can be, cannot be enforced. Hmm. Insurable interest in property. Want to read that for me, please? A person has an insurable interest in property whenever the Pecuniary loss. What does pecuniary mean? Pecuniary equals what? Show. Thank you for reading that, sir. Show me the what? Show me the money. Keep going, please. Is immaterial? If it's immaterial, whether the insured is the owner of the legal or equivalent title, Mm. a lien holder, or merely a person possessing the property. For example, Thank you. What did that last sentence say? You should have the, intro, the, the, the policy when the loss happens. Yeah, the insurance must have an insurable interest at the time the loss occurred. That's going to be very important. I want to do the case summary on page six, uh, 691 in a second. Insurable interest, and thanks for reading that, insurable interest in life A person who purchases life insurance can name anyone as beneficiary, regardless of whether that beneficiary has an insurable interest in the life of the insured. A beneficiary who uh, purchases a policy, however, must have an insurable interest in the life of the insured. 
Such an interest exists if the beneficiary can reasonably expect to receive pecuniary gain from the uh, continued life of the per other person, and conversely, would suffer financial loss from the latter's death. Thus, a creditor has an insurable interest in the life of the debtor because he may not be paid the amount owed upon the death of the, of the debtor. Oh, they get the money? Some reason me please the facts in she lost interest when he got the house. Morgan versus America Security Insurance Company, please. Anybody while Dorothy and James Morgan were still married? While Dorothy and James Morgan were still married, Dorothy purchased insurance on the home and Morgan security insurance company. The policy was issued on November 30, 1981, listing the insured as Dorothy L. Morgan. Shortly thereafter, the Morgans entered into a separation agreement in which Dorothy D. ceded her interest in the house to James. Let's stop right there for a second. What happened? What's the separation agreement? The agreement on what goes where during the separation. Mm -hmm, very good. Okay. And so she deeded him the house. All right. Go ahead. Keep going, please. Um, the Morgans were divorced on August 26, 1982. On November 28, 1982, the house was destroyed by fire. American Security refused to pay on the policy, claiming that Dorothy had no insurable interest in the property at the time of loss. Morgan sued the insurer and contending that Thank you. Thank up. you. I see where she messed up. Uh -huh. Before you say anything, she Go ahead. took out the policy and it was in her name. Uh huh. They separated. She needed it to him. Yep. So he doesn't get coverage because it's under her name and the house is not under her name anymore. Dumb as hell. Excellent. Oh my God. And, and I'm going to ask you a question. Who messed up? Later on, I'm going to ask you a question. Who, who I always ask a question. Who messed up? Not yet. She did. Well, who else messed up? Not yet. I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ask who else messed up. Yeah, you're right. Well, or he did, right? But, 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 but my question will be who else messed up, right? In this, but, I, but if I, if I was online, I'd ask students right now, uh, let's go to the chat and write down what is the issue? What is issue? What two words are the issue? Hmm? Insurance policy. What else? 33 1B. Insurable interest. Yeah, right? Does the transfer of property end the insurable interest? Right? That's what you're talking about. That's the a, that's a legally, legally stick way to say it, right? Does the transfer of property end the insurable interest? Yes. That's our question. Would someone read the decision for us, please? As found in the textbook on page 691. As is expected, yes, Thank you. for the American society, in the case of property insurance, the insurable interest must exist at the time of the loss. If the insured part was all interest in the property was prior to the loss, that interest will be not covered. Mm. Dorothy had conveyed her interest in the property prior to the loss. She did not have an insurable interest at the time of the loss and therefore cannot recover, recover on the policy. James Morgan was not insured on this policy. Thank you. Now I have my textbook. Who made a mistake in this case? Dorothy. Hmm? James made a mistake. Yes. Okay. Dorothy do, but James mainly. Well, who else would James? Who should have been looking at this matter? A mistake that none of you are going to make. When you become what? Yeah, become a lawyer. Who made a mistake? Huh? I think, yeah. I think a lawyer, right? The lawyer should look at and said to him, you know what? Uh, you need to have and insure my interest in this house now. You know, you can't, as you said earlier, uh, Dorothy's uh, interest ended, right? Is, it ended. If they, were, if they were married when she made the policy, why didn't she just make the policy with both of them? That's why I'm saying it falls on her. Like, if they're still married before they divorced, a year prior, why didn't she just have both of them on the policy? When they split, they do that during the, during the um, separation agreement. That doesn't make any sense. Well, so, well, I, I, she, she went to have power over the house, but you know what? Oh, the bottom well, line is... You needed it over to him. you you got to be kidding me. Right, so, be right. She, it says shortly after they entered the separation agreement in which she deeded her interest in the house to James. So she gave the house to James. At that point, James should have gotten what? Gotten Insurance. Right? That's, that's ridiculous. Why, why would, okay, it still doesn't make sense to me. They're married. They don't know the divorce is happening. 
Why have the hearing? Why not have the problem? But that's the job of the lawyer. That's why I say who else messed up, right? The lawyer, whoever did the deed, should have said, you know what? Now you need to have insurance on this house. Now it's your house, you know? Um, it, here, the next part says, a partner or a partnership has an insurable interest in the life of each of the partners. Now we're going to next level, guys. Because the death of any one of them will dissolve the firm and cause some degree of loss to the partnership. My one of the people talking about partnerships here. A business enterprise has an insurable interest in the life of an executive or a key employee because that person's death would inflict a financial loss on the business to the extent that a replacement might not be readily available or could not be found. Here it comes. In the case of life insurance, the insurable interest must exist at the time the policy is obtained. It is immaterial that the interest no longer exists when the loss is actually sustained. Thus, the fact that a husband insured and a wife beneficiary are divorced after the life insurance policy is procured does not affect the validity of the policy. Also, the fact that a partnership is terminated after a life insurance policy obtained by one partner or another does not invalidate the policy. Turn the page. Okay, one of the people, let's, somebody read for me, please. Proceeds to surviving partnership uh, uh, or the deceased partner's wife. Who's going to get it? Partnership or the wife? Somebody read for me, please. Joel. Uh, uh, Let's stop a second. What did they do? They took out a what? Okay, excellent. Keep going. Keep going. Um, premiums were paid out of partnership funds. Mm. On September, uh, February 28, mm -hmm. 1983, Graves and Norris divided the partnership assets, but they did not perform the customary step of dissolving and winding up the partnership. Graves became the sole owner of the business and continued to pay the premiums on both insurance policies. Joel Norris sued Graves, seeking the proceeds of the insurance policy for herself, alleging that Graves had no insurable interest in the life of James Norris at the time of his death. From a judgment on behalf of the estate, Graves received. Thank you. So the estate won at the lower case, a lower lower court, right? What are they fighting about? What's the wife want? And thank you for reading that again. Thank you. She's like, I want the money, right? Exactly. And and um, and what is Graves saying? <laughs> he wants the money, right? Because he did the premium. On the he, yeah, he did, but he, now he's a sole, sole owner of the business, and he still continued to pay the premium on both insurance policies until James Norrie died. But there's a paperwork in the name attached. Well, see... The issue is, here are the issues. Does a partner have an insurable interest in the life of another partner? That's number one. Well, when they took out the insurance policy, they both made them each. Well, that, that's one argument. That, it depends on if it's but when he became sole owner of the business, did that preclude that from occurring at that point? When he has the business all to himself? Uh, that's a question. That's just a question. So does a partner have an insurable interest in the life of another partner? Two... Was the surviving partner required to remit the insurance proceeds to the estate uh, to remit the insurance proceeds to the estate of the decedent partner? In other words, did they have to give that money to the wife, right? Or should that money go to the partnership? So let's go ahead and read for us decision, please. Want to read for me, please, Charles? Judgment for Graves. A partner. Or a partnership has insurable interest in the life of one of the partners. Mm -hmm. This interest is continued even if the partner is discontinued prior to the death of one of the partners. Thus, Graves was entitled to the proceeds of the policy. Oh, Graves won? Why? Because, as you said earlier, partnership, right? And here they're saying, thanks for reading that, sir. A partnership, or, uh, a partner or a partnership has insurable interest. So, one, you have insurable interest in the loss of what? Of another partner. Right? And then, so the partnership has that. And then the interest continues even if the partnership is discontinued prior to the death of one of the partners. 
So here they're saying graves a partner, still gets the money and not the wife. Mm. 33-1C, we're on page 692. The, the formation of a contract of insurance is governed by the general principles applicable to contracts. By statute, insurance policy must be written to avoid deception. Many state statutes also specify the content of certain policies in whole or in part. Some statutes specify the size and style of type to be used in printing the policies. Visions in a policy that conflict with statutory requirements are generally void. Okay, application is part of the contract. The application for insurance is generally attached to the policy when issued and is made part of the contract of insurance by express stipulation of the policy. Insured is bound by all material statements in the attached application. Someone read the example for us, please. Insurers seek to stop. Insurers seek to stop the insurance exchange or plan price insurance policy for SPOSI plans by amending their application process to require all applicants in the filter to apply or fill out policy owner intent forms, requiring disclosures that, if answered honestly, will indicate a solid disdain and rejection of the application. Mm. And if not answered honestly, the policy can be voided during the two year contestability period because of the material misinterpretation. Right, we don't want material misinterpretations. Thanks for reading that. Statutory provisions is part of the contract. Want to read that for me, please? When the statute can. When the statute requires that insurance contracts contain certain provisions or cover certain specific, specified losses, a contract of insurance that does not comply with the statute will be interpreted as though it contained all the provisions required by the statute. For example, Louisiana law clearly requires liability insurance covering on all rental vehicles to protect the victim injured due to the fault of the driver of the rental vehicle. But this did provide liability protection of the vehicle it rented to White. However, the terms of the car rental agreement provided for termination of liability coverage in wide ranging circumstances. White injured White injured Karen Dobb while driving intoxicated. One of the clauses set forth in the rental agreement for termination of liability coverage because state law required coverage on rental vehicles. The court determined that the allowed termination of coverage based on violation of the rental agreement is pursuant to state law. Okay. Is it because, before you move on, is it because he was driving intoxicated and that's why the termination of liability coverage? Because that's against the contract? Because you want to protect all who are part of uh, what may have happened from, uh, from the uh, accident itself. So, you know. So it's against public policy. But what I'm asking is, since he was driving intoxicated, is that why they weren't held liable? No, the, it, it, the, uh, you have liability insurance on all of the vehicles to protect victims, to make sure that, that someone pays for uh, the person being in that type of condition, you know? So uh, one of the causes set forth the rental agreement for termination of liability, because state law requires coverage on rental, rental vehicles, right, insurance coverage, right? The court determined that to allow termination of coverage, in other words, to not have the coverage because of the person's condition, would violate the re rental agreement. All right, and be against uh, public policy. So they get to keep the insurance. Anti, thank you for reading that. Anti lapse and cancellation statutes and provisions. If the premiums are not paid on time, the policy under ordinary contract law would lapse because of non payment. However, with life insurance policies by either policy provision or statute, the insurance is allowed a grace period of what? 30 or 31 days in which to make payment right, of the premium due. When there is a default in the payment of a premium by insurer, the insured may be required by statute to, one, issue a paid up policy in a smaller amount, two, provide extended insurance for a period of time, or three, pay the cash surrender value of the policy. The contract of insurance may expressly declare that it may or may not be canceled by the insurer's unilateral act. By statute or policy provision, Insurer is commonly required to give a specific number of days written notice of cancellation. Turn the page. Need a volunteer. Uh, page uh, 694, 33-1E. Modification of contract. Want to read that for me, please? As is the case with most contracts, a contract of insurance can be modified if both insurer and insurer agree to change the or agree to the change. The insurer cannot modify the contract without the consent of the insurer when the right to do so is not restricted in the insurance contract. To make changes or corrections to the policy, to the policy 
it is not necessary to issue a new policy. An endorsement on the policy or the execution of a separate rider is effective for the purpose of changing the policy. And the provision of an endorsement conflicts with a provision of the policy. The endorsement controls because it is the later document. Right. Thank you. What happens if, um, thanks again for reading, thank you again. What happens if the terms in the insurance contract itself are ambiguous? What happens then? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do about ambiguous terms? Who will benefit, who will not benefit? How will a court judge in general? The rule in favor of what? The policy holder? Why? Because they didn't what? Write the ambiguous terms, right? The insurance company had, had the uh, ability to make the terms unambiguous. So here, uh, on 30-1F, a contract of insurance is interpreted by the same rules that govern the interpretation of ordinary contracts. Words are to be given their plain and ordinary meaning interpreted in light of the nature of the coverage intended. However, there's your conjunctive adverb, an insurance policy construed strictly against the insurer who chooses the language of the policy, and if a reasonable construction may be given that would justify recovery, a court would do so. For example, Dr. Kolb consented to an elective surgical procedure on his right eye after which something happened that caused the wound to start leaking and resulted in loss of vision in his eye. This forced him to retire as an orthopedic surgeon. His Paul Revere life insurance disability income insurance policy provided income for life for a disability due to accidental bodily injury. Policy provides benefits for the shorter duration if the disability was caused by sickness. Dr. Kolb's vision loss was not expected and, um, and proceeded from an unidentified post-surgical cause. Applying the plain ordinary meaning of an accidental injury, the court decided that Dr. Cobb was entitled to income for life under the injury provision of the policy. If there is an ambiguity in the policy, if there is an ambiguity in the policy, the vision is interpreted against what? The insurer. For example, on August 29, 2005, the Burnett's residence in Gulf of Mississippi was damaged under Hurricane Katrina. Uh, all state uh, tendered a check for uh, $2,600.35 uh, net after the deductible under its deluxe home owner's policy. The Burnett's uh, contend that their coverage losses are between $50,000 and $100,000. They brought a suit against all state. The trial judge denied all state's motion to dismiss find that the two provisions of the policy that purport to exclude coverage for wind and rain damage were ambiguous in light of the other policy provisions granting coverage for wind and rain damage in light of the inclusion of a hurricane deductible as part of the policy. The court found that because the policy was ambiguous, its weather exclusion was unenforceable in the context of losses attributable to wind and rain that occur in a hurricane. Insurer, however, is not to be deprived of the benefit of an unambiguous provision included in a policy for the insurer's benefit. For example, when the, when the covered property was limited only to business personal property, the cost of removal of debris after the collapse of a barn being built by an insured contractor was not a loss involving business personal property. Uh, will you read for me, please, on page 695, burden of proof, please? Thank you. When an insurance claim is disputed by the insurer, the person bringing the suit has the burden of proving that there was a loss that occurred while the policy was in force, and that the loss was kind of was of a kind that was within the coverage or scope of the policy. Mm -hmm. A policy will contain contain exceptions to the coverage. This means that the policy is not acceptable. When an exception applies to a situation, exceptions to coverage to, to coverage are generally strictly interpreted against the insurer. However, insurance policies are contracts, and the plain and, and unambiguous language of the contract will apply. For example, Aroma Marketing Incorporated purchased a company by the commercial general liabilities. 
CEO of policy from Hartford Midwest Insurance Company. Policy covered any damages that our floor became legally obligated to pay because of bodily injury, property damage, or personal and advertising injury arising out of a warrior's business. Coverage was excluded, however, for personal and advertising injury arising out of any violation of any intellectual property, intellectual property rights, rights mm -hmm. such as copyright patent in trademark or trade name, trade secret, service mark, or other de destination of origin or authenticity, or hired camera ride clip to appear in and film and exercise video for the business to be used at a consumer electronic show and on the client's internet site or use her images to sell other products and she sued for misappropriation of her image mm. in violation of her right of publicity. The court found that Harper had no duty to defend or identify or because the model plan fell within an intellectual property. Thank you. We're on page 695, uh, 33-1H. And thank you for reading that. Ensure bad faith. As is required in the case of all contracts, insurer must act in what? Good faith. Good faith, right? And thank you again for reading. In processing and paying claims under his policy, right? Good faith. In some states, laws have been enacted making an insurer liable for a statutory penalty and attorney fees in case of a bad faith failure or delay in paying a valid claim within a specified period of time. A bad faith refusal is generally considered to be any frivolous or unfounded refusal to comply with the demand of a policyholder to pay according to what? The policy. Yes, let's turn now to page uh, 696. It says, will someone read for me, please, when it is a liability insurer's duty to defend? See that? Thank you. So notice here, thank you for reading that. If there is a reasonable basis for what? For the insurer's belief that a claim is not covered by its policy, its refusal to pay the claim does not subject to liability for a breach of what? It must be what? Good what? Good faith, right? Or for a statutory penalty. This is, this is so even though the court holds the insurer is liable for the claim. What's the example they give us? I want to read the example for us. Following illustration. The following illustrates an insurer's bad faith failure to pay a claim as opposed to an insurer's reasonable base for failure to pay. Uh, Carmela Garza's home and possessions were destroyed in a fire set by an arsonist on August 19th. Carmela's husband, Paul Rawl, who was no longer living at the home, had a criminal record. The investigator for the insurer stated that while he had no specific information to implicate the Garza's and the arson, Carmela may have wanted the proceeds to finance relocation to another city. October, however, Etna's investigators ruled out the possibility of uh, Garza's had the motive or the opportunity to set the fire. Insurer thus no longer had a reasonable basis to refuse to pay the claim after the state. Yet it took over a year and a half in a court intervention for Etna to allow Carmela to see a copy of her policy, which had been destroyed in the fire. Two days after the fire, Etna paid only, uh, I'm sorry, two years after the fire, Etna paid only $28,624.55 for structural damage to the fire gutted home which was insured for 
$111,000. The court held that Aetna's actions committed a what? Constitute a what? Bad faith failure to pay the insurer. Here it says bad faith failure, right? Now, what's this time limitation on insured? The insured must comply with a number of time limitations in making a claim. For example, insured must promptly notify insurer of any claim that may arise, submit a proof of loss statement within a time set forth of policy, and bring any court action based on policy within a specified time period. What's subrogation of insurer? Some instances, uh, the insurer has a claim against a third person for the harm covered by the insurance policy. A sells an automobile insurance policy that, uh, that provides collision coverage to B. C rear ends B's car at a traffic rotary in the city. A pays the full amount of the property damage repair costs. A is then subrogated to B's claim against C, the person who caused the harm. All right, you can take a look at figure 30-1. When the insurer is subrogated to the insurer's claim, the insurer may enforce the claim against what? The third person, right? Kind of insurance, 33-2, page 697 at the bottom. Businesses today have specialized risk managers to identify the risks to which the individual business are exposed, measure those risks, and purchase insurance to cover those risks, or decide to self-insure in whole or in part. Turn the page to 698, please. Insurance policies can be grouped into certain categories. Five major categories of insurance are considered here. One, business liability insurance. Two, marine and inland marine insurance. Three, fire and homeowners insurance. Four, automobile insurance. And five, life insurance. So read for me please on page 698, 33-2A, business liability insurance, please. Business may purchase commercial li general liability, GL, uh, CGL policies. Take them there, somebody, please. This insurance is a broad, all risk form of insurance providing coverage to all sums that the insured may legally obtain or obligated to pay their damages because of bodily injury or property damage caused by an occurrence. The insurer is obligated to defend the insured's business and pay damages under CGL policies for product liability cases. Actions for wrong actions for wrongful termination of employees and life casualty damages caused by the advertisement of or employee dishonesty and trademark infringement suits. The insured the insurer may also be obligated to pay for damages in the form of cleanup costs in full for contamination of land, water, and air under the environmental statute. Thank you. The insurer must defend when coverage is a close issue regarding whether the policy would provide indemnity. The duty to defend does not depend on the truth or falsity of the allegations made against the insured by a third party, rather the factual allegations in the complaint that potentially support a covered claim are all that is needed to invoke the insurer's duty to defend. It is common for the insurer to seek a declaratory judgment if it believes that the policy does not call for either a defense or an indemnity. Thank you all again for, for reading. Turn to page, uh, page 700. Business may purchase policies providing liability insurance for their directors and officers. Manufacturers, sellers may purchase product liability insurance. Professional persons such as accountants, physicians, lawyers, architects, and engineers may obtain liability insurance protection against malpractice suits. For example, and architects, uh, the architects of the MCI Center of Sports Arena, Washington, D.C., were titled under their professional liability insurance coverage to be defended by the, their insurer in a lawsuit seeking only injunctive relief for the firm's alleged failure to comply with the American with Disabilities Act, enhanced sideline requirements. What's marine insurance on page 733 2B? Marine insurance policy covers perils relating to the Yes, please read, read for us, please, about ocean uh, marine, please. Ocean marine insurance is a form of insurance that covers ships and air cargoes against perils of the sea. 
Full cost of promotion, marine insurance are generally available. Full cargo, liability, and freight. Full insurance covers physical damage to the vessel. Cargo insurance protects the cargo um, owner against financial loss if mm -hmm. the goods being shipped are lost before damage to sea. Yeah, see, this is the type of stuff, reference that we have uh, for slavery, where you can find out these insurance companies that insured the boats and the slaves and everything like that. And also, that's part of the records you can go back to and do that type of research to find out who was doing what, when, and, and where. Cargo insurance does not, thank you for reading that, sir. Cargo insurance does not cover risk prior to the loading of the insured cargo on board the vessel. An additional warehouse coverage endorsement is needed to ensure merchandise held in a warehouse prior to the import or export forages. Li liability insurance covers the shipper's liability if the ship causes damage to another ship or its cargo. Freight insurance assures that the ship owner will receive payment for the transportation charges. All risk policies consolidate coverage of all four classes of ocean marine insurance into one policy. What's inland marine? What's that? Inland marine insurance evolved from marine insurance, protects goods and transit over land, by air, or on rivers, lakes, coastal waters. Inland marine insurance can be used to insure property held by a bailey. Moreover, it is common for institutions financing automobile dealers, uh, new car inventories to purchase inland marine insurance policy insure what? against damage to the automobiles while in inventory. Fire insurance, page 701, 33-2C. Fire and homeowner's insurance. A fire insurance policy is a contract to indemnify the insured for property destruction or damage caused by fire. In almost every state, the New York standard fire insurance form is a standard policy. A homeowner's insurance policy is a combination of the standard fire insurance policy and comprehensive personal liability insurance. It thus provides fire, theft, and certain liability protection in a single insurance contract. Fire insurance. For fire insurance to cover the loss, for fire insurance to cover fire loss, there must be an actual hostile fire that is the immediate cause of the loss. A hostile fire is, is one that becomes uncontrollable, burns with excessive heat, or escapes from the place where it is intended to be. To illustrate, when soot is ignited and causes a fire in the chimney, the fire is hostile. On the, hand, on the other hand, if a loss is caused by the smoke or heat of a fire that has not broken out of its ordinary container or become uncontrollable, the loss results from a friendly fire. The policy does not cover damage from a friendly fire. By policy uh, endorsement, however, the coverage may be extended to include loss by what? A friendly what? A friendly fire. Okay, very, very good. Let's turn the page, my wonderful people, to page uh, 702. Someone read for me, please. Coinsurance? What's that? Proportionate share. Proportionate share of the amount of insurance required to be carried. Thank you. Suppose that the owner of a building with a value of 400000 insures it against loss to the extent of 240000 The policy contains a co-insurance clause requiring that that insurance of 80% of the value of the property be carried. In this case, 320000 Assume that a $160,000 loss is then sustained. The insured received not 160000 for the insurer, but only what? 
three-fourths of that amount, which is 120000 because the amount insured carried what? 240000 It is only three-fourths of the amount required of the $320,000, right? Some states prohibit the use of a coinsurance clause. Assignment. Fire insurance is a personal contract. In the absence of a statute or contractual authorization, it cannot be assigned without the consent of the insurer. Occupancy. Provision in a policy of fire insurance related to the use and occupancy of the, the property are generally strictly construed because they relate to the hazards involved. Homeowner insurance. In addition to providing protection against losses resulting from fire, the homeowner policy provides liability coverage for accidents or injuries that occur on the premises of the insured. Moreover, a conjunctive adverb again, the liability provision provide coverage for unintentional injuries to the others, or to others away from the home for which the insured or any member of the resident family is held responsible, such as injuries caused to others by golfing, hunting, or fishing accidents. Generally, motor vehicles, including mopeds and uh, recreational vehicles, are excluded from such personal liability coverage. A homeowner's policy also provides protection from losses caused by what? Theft. In addition, it provides protection for all permanent residents of the house, including all family members living with the insured. Thus, a child insured who lives at home is protected on insurance policy for the value of the personal property loss when the home is destroyed by fire. What's automobile insurance? Anybody want to cover, take that one for me? Page 702, the bottom, 30BS2D. Automobile insurance, what's that? Associations of insurers such as National Bureau of Casualty Underwrites, Underwriters uh, and the National Automobile Underwriter Association have proposed standard forms of automobile insurance policies. These forms have been approved by the association members in virtually all states. The form used today by most states is the Personal Auto Policy, the PAP. Perils covered. Part A of the policy provides liability coverage that protects the insured driver or owner from the claims of others for bodily injuries or damage to their property. Part B of the policy provides coverage for medical expenses sustained by a covered person or persons in an accident. Part C of the PAP provides coverage for damages uh, the insured is entitled to recover from an uninsured motorist. Part D provides coverage for loss or damage to covered automobile. Coverage under Part D includes collision coverage and coverage of other than collision losses, such as fire and theft. What are covered persons? Covered persons include the named, insured, or any family member. A person related by blood, marriage, or adoption to a, or a ward or foster child who is resident of the household. If an individual is driving with the permission of an insured, the individual is also covered. In any case, however, the language insurance policy is controlling. For example, a court of health state farm mutual position that uh, Robert Gudina, Gudina was not an insured under his wife's automobile policy. Gudina had been asked to leave the house by the wife until he found a job, and his residence was not at his wife's home at the time of the accident. Policy definition was controlling, which stated, spouse means your husband or wife who resides primarily with you. Wow. So that case was covered because what? He wasn't living with his what? His wife. Use in operation. Someone read that for me, please, on page 703. Use in operation. Thank you. Notice and cooperation. The insured is under a duty to give notice of claims, to inform, and to cooperate with the insurer. Notice and cooperation are conditions present to the liability of the insured. So read for me, please. No fault insurance. Yes. Doer 
from the consequences of a negligent act by any defunct cause and uh, damages such acts and result of the laws insured persons are barred from suing the party at fault for ordinary claims when the insured is insured is injured while using the insured automobile the insurer will make a payment without regard to whose fault caused the harm however the if the automobile collision results in permanent serious disablement uh, uh, or disfigurement or death death if uh, or if the medical bills and lost wages of the plaintiff exceed at a specified amount suit may be brought against the party thank you uh, we saw on page 703, uh, the bottom, 33-2E, life insurance. There are three basic types of life insurance. Term insurance, and thanks again for reading. Thank you all who have read. Thank you so much and answered questions. Three basic types of life insurance. Term insurance. Whole life insurance. Endowment insurance. Term insurance is what? is written for a specified period, a specified number of years, right? And terminates at the end of that period. If the insurer dies within the time period covered by the policy, the face amount is paid to the beneficiary. If the insurer is still alive at the end of the time period, the contract expires and the insurer has no further obligation. They're off the hook. Term policies have little or no cash surrender value. Turn the page, please, to page 704. Whole life insurance or ordinary life insurance provides lifetime insurance protection. It also has an investment element. Part of every premium covers the cost of insurance, and the remainder of the premium builds up a cash surrender value of the policy. The endowment insurance policy is one that pays the face amount of the policy if the insurer dies within the policy period. If the insurer lives to the end of the policy period, the face amount is paid to the insurer at the end of the period. Many life insurance companies pay double the amount of the policy called double indemnity. If death is caused by an accident, and death occurs within 90 days afterward, a comparatively small additional premium is charged for this special protection. In consideration of an additional premium, many life insurance companies also provide insurance against total permanent disability of the insured. Disability is usually defined in a life insurance policy as any incapacity resulting from bodily injury or disease to engage in any occupation for remuneration or profit. Exclusions. Life insurance policies frequently provide that death is not within the protection of the policy and that a double indemnity provision is not applicable when death is caused by one, suicide, two, narcotics, three, the intentional act of another, four, execution for a crime, five, war activities, or six, operation of aircraft. The beneficiary, the recipient of life insurance policy proceeds that are payable upon the death of the injured is called the what? The beneficiary. The beneficiary may be a third person or the estate of the injured, uh, I'm sorry, the estate of the insured, and there may be more than one beneficiary. The beneficiary named in a policy may be barred from claiming the proceeds of the policy. It's generally provided by statute or, or stated by court decision that a beneficiary who has feloniously killed the insured is not entitled to receive the proceeds of policy. The customary policy provides that the insured reserves the right to change the beneficiary without the latter's consent. When a policy contains a, such a provision, the beneficiary cannot object to a change that destroys all of that beneficiary's rights under that policy and that names another person as beneficiary. An insurance policy will ordinarily state that to change the beneficiary, 
the insurer must be so instructed in writing by the insured, and the policy must then be endorsed by the company with the change of the beneficiary. These visions are construed liberally. If the insured has notified the insurer but dies before the endorsement of the change by the company, the change of beneficiary is effective. Conjunction with adverb. However, if the insured has not taken any steps to comply with the policy requirements, a change of beneficiary is not effective, even though a change was intended. Hmm. What's the incontestability clause? Statutes commonly require the inclusion of an incontestability clause in life insurance policies. Ordinarily, this clause states that after the lapse of two years, the policy cannot be uh, contested by the insurance company. The insurer is free to contest the validity of the policy at any time during the contestability period. Once the period has expired, the insurer was what? The insurer must pay the stipulated sum upon the death of the insured it cannot claim that in obtaining the policy, the insured had been guilty of misrepresentation, fraud, or any other kind, uh, other kind of that would entitle it to avoid the contract of the insurance of insurance. Courts and legislatures have addressed the issue of imposter fraud in Amex Life uh, Insurance Company versus Superior Court. California Superior uh, Supreme Court concluded that after the accessibility period had expired. An insurer may not assert defense that an imposter took the medical examination. Jose Morales had applied for a life insurance policy from, from Amex. A paramedic working for Amex met a man claiming to be Morales and took blood and urine samples, listing him as 5'10 and weighing 172 pounds. His blood sample was HIV negative. The individual did not provide identification. Some two years later, Morales died of AIDS-related causes. Morales had listed his height as 5'6", and his weight as 142 pounds on his insurance application. The California Supreme Court stated that Amex, which had done nothing to protect its interest but collect premiums, could not challenge coverage based upon imposter defense. Subsequent to the court's decision, the California legislature amended such state uh, insurance law to provide for an imposter defense in that state. As set forth in the Miller case, Florida does not recognize an imposter defense to incontestability. The legislative purpose of such clauses is to protect beneficiaries from insurers' refusal to honor policies by asserting pre-existing conditions, leaving beneficiaries in the untenable position of having to battle with powerful insurance companies in court. So we want to protect the, uh, the beneficiary, right? What do my beautiful people please read for me? The uh, all my beautiful people, what do my people? Would you read for me, please? And take turns on uh, page seven hundred six, reading the summary. I'll do the first paragraph. Insurance is a contract called the policy. Under an insurance policy, the insurer provides, in consideration of premium payments, to pay the insured or beneficiary a sum of money if the insurer sustains a specified loss or is subjected to a specified liability. These contracts are made through an insurance agent who is an agent for the insurance company or through an insurance broker who is the agent of the insured when obtaining a policy for the latter. Let's go next. The person purchasing an insurance contract must Thank have you. an insurable interest in the insurance life and it be insured life or property. An insurable interest in property exists when the damage or destruction of the property will cause a direct monetary loss to the insured. In the case of property insurance, the insured, the insured must have an insurable interest at the time of the loss. An insurable interest in the life of the insured exists in the purchaser if the purchaser would suffer a financial loss from the insured's death. The insured or interest must in exist as of the time the policy is obtained. Ocean Marine policies insure ships and their cargoes against the perils of the sea. Inland marine policies insure goods being transported by land, by air, or on inland and coastal waterways. For fire insurance to cover a fire loss, there must be an actual hospital fire that is uh, that is the immediate cause of the loss. The insurer is liable for the actual amount of the loss sustained up to the maximum amount stated in the policy. 
an exception exists when the policy contains a term insurance clause requiring the insured to maintain a insurance up to the current percentage of the value of the property. To the extent that is to the extent that is not done, the insured is deemed a co-insurer with the insurer, and the insurer is liable for only a portion or share of the amount of the insurance required to be carried. A homeowner's insurance policy uh, provides fire theft and liability protection in a single contract. Automobile insurance may provide protection for collision damage to the insured property and the and injury to persons. It may also cover liability to third persons for injury and property damage as well as loss by fire or theft. Thank you very much for reading that. A life insurance policy requires the insurer to pay a stated sum of money to a named beneficiary upon the death of the insured. It may be a term insurance policy, a whole life policy, or an endowment policy. State law common requires the inclusion of an incontestability clause, whereby at the conclusion of the incontestability period, the insurer cannot contest the validity of the policy. So here we have a, a insurance, uh, life insurance policy requires the insurer to pay a stated sum of money to a named beneficiary upon the death of the insured. It may be a term insurance policy, a whole life policy, or an endowment policy. And then state law common requires the inclusion of a incontestability clause, whereby the conclusion of the contestability period, the insurer cannot, cannot, cannot contest the validity of the policy. Thank you very much, my wonderful people, for all your help and help with help with that chapter. Thank you.